Ms. Smith, yes, what would you like to tell us today? First of all, I want to say how very sorry I am um, It's okay, Susan. Just, just, just talk with us. I know that what I did was horrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I would give anything if I could go back and change it. And I love Michael and Alice with all my heart. Ms. Smith, were you under the influence of drugs or alcohol the night that you murdered your children? <clears throat> No, ma'am, I was not. And your, attorney, your attorney talked about working with mental health. Is that helpful to you? Ma'am. Mr. Thomas. I talked, hear you. Mr. Thomas talked about the fact that you were working with mental health. And my question is, is that helpful to you? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> is that something that you would be willing to continue with on the outside if you were granted parole? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Ms. Smith, your crime took a lot of, of resources from the law enforcement community. What, if anything, would you say to the folks who worked so hard to find your children if you had the opportunity to speak to them today? that I'm sorry that I put them through that. I really, really am. And I'm especially sorry to the drivers that I had to find them. I wish I could take that back, I really do. I was really, I didn't lie to get away with it. I really didn't. I was just scared. I didn't know how I could tell the people that loved them that they would never see them again. I didn't know how I could tell David he couldn't see his sons again. <laughs> and I'm, 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 do, I'm sorry. I don't know. I know that's not enough. I know it's not. But I don't know. I know they just have like words, but they come from my heart. They really do. Right. One of the things that we review <laughs> is your institutional record. And you've had some infractions throughout the years. Um, some okay. involving um, the use of some narcotics. Do you have any issues with drugs or alcohol at this point? I don't, no ma'am, I don't. And you had a recent, <clears throat> you had a recent disciplinary infraction just a few months ago. So why should this board think that if we grant you parole that you're gonna go out and follow the rules and the laws of society if you do not follow the rules within the institution? Well, this last infraction, um, I was trusted the wrong person. This lady contacted me and I trusted her. I thought she was going to do a documentary on mental health and I really am not guilty of what they, what they charged me with and I have filed an appeal on that charge. Um, and as far as your question, um, I've never been in trouble before and the things that I have been found guilty of in here have been just stupidity. I just made, I, I know I made a lot of mistakes in here and I have learned from them. And before this last infraction it had been 10 years, because I grew up and I knew that I needed to stop making dumb decisions. And I did. I, I just, 
I knew it was time to just to grow up and do the right thing. I just made a lot of dumb choices and mistakes in here. So I know I've learned from those mistakes. What do you feel is the most and important thing that. that you've learned while you've been incarcerated? Ma'am? What do you think is the most important thing that you have learned while you have been incarcerated? That, um, that people are important, that it's, that forgiveness and love, um, that family is important and that decisions we make not just affect us, they affect the people that we love and not to take things or people for granted. Is there anything else that you would like to tell us today that wasn't in your packet or that has not already been said? Um, I would just like to say that uh, I am a Christian and God is a big part of my life and I know he has forgiven me and it is by his grace and mercy that and I have a lot of faith, and I live by that every day. And I just ask that that you um, show that same kind of mercy as well. Um, and I guess, yeah, that's it.